Hello there and welcome to our parent workshop, Why is Turn-Taking Better Than Sharing? I'm excited to bring this content to you tonight because it supports our emotional growth and relationships pillars, which are two of our seven pillars of wellness at Wellkind School. And this is a big topic because it's one of the most asked questions. How do I teach my child to share? How do I teach my child to get along with other children? So just by being here tonight, you are supporting your child's social and emotional development. So congratulations. Two of the most crucial aspects of their development, of course, are social and emotional development. When we think of what's important later in life, life skills is getting along well with others and being able to manage emotions. So those are the top of the list. So let's break that down tonight. We want to take this time and explain the nuances, the slight differences between turn-taking and sharing. And I know that sharing is most commonly um, is, is the most common way that parents express to their children what they want um, when they're trying to teach them how to get along well with others. We often say share, share, but I wanted to break down the slight differences for you tonight. So when children are taking turns, it implies that the child will eventually receive 100% of the desired item and may use it however they please. Sharing implies that the child has an uncertain amount of time with the object and an uncertain amount of the desired item that they can call their own. And they may have to be flexible and go with the flow because another child is involved. So we can uh, have the image of, for example, a water bottle, which again, isn't um, it, it's not very desirable to a child. But if you had a water bottle in your hand and you said to your child, share um, with their sibling, for example, it's uncertain. How much water do I get to drink? How much water does my sibling get to drink? Who's holding it? What part do I get to hold? So it's confusing for a child. When we say take turns, that means that I have the water bottle fully in my hands. It's nobody else's. It's just mine. And I get to take as many drinks as I want before I pass it to you. So it's a slight difference, but to a child, um, it actually is much more clear when they know they have a turn. And when it's someone else's turn, they learn that they have to wait until it's theirs. They much more prefer that way than having to figure out all of the other uh, difficult brain processes that go along with sharing. So we're going to go into that a little bit more, but I just wanted to take a moment to, to, to share the slight differences between the two words. When should my child learn these skills? This is a big question that parents have. So between one and two years old, children are beginning to develop these skills. And through repetition, which is something that we work on often um, at the center, through repetition and through adult modeling, children can do very well in most scenarios with turn-taking. And that's why we're focusing on turn-taking tonight and saying that it's better than sharing. Of course, we're being playful when we say that it's better than sharing, but generally it's an easier concept for children to learn and they can start learning it at a very early age. So they can do very well in this scenario as long as we keep our expectations in line with their development. So that just means that we have an age appropriate standard. We're not expecting a one-year-old or a two-year-old to do something that we would expect a five-year-old to do. Um, the ages of three to five, children can become more developed in their skills, and they can actually become very good at sharing and turn-taking if they have been supported to learn these skills at an early age. So particularly, we see children that have come through our program that are, start as infants or young toddlers and go all the way through. They are much more skilled at sharing because, of course, they have much more practice. So they're able to practice these skills on an ongoing basis. If they don't have a lot of practice, if they're an only child and they're starting um, maybe just as a preschooler, then it may take them a while. They have to observe this skill being modeled by other children and adults. But over time, with consistency, they will begin to accept and trust in the process. I wanted to point out here what a child can be learning from taking turns versus sharing. So when a child is taking turns, and it could be with an adult or another child, they are learning patience, they are learning impulse control, they are learning communication and fairness. So they have to wait their turn. 
So that that's where the patience comes in. They have to wait while the other person is utilizing what they would like to be using. They have to have some impulse control because they want it when they want it, but they're going to hold back and manage those emotions while it's the other person's turn. They have to communicate. So there's a level of communication that goes along with when is it going to be my turn? When do I get a turn? Um, and that has to be modeled with an adult. But as a child grows, they can do some of that negotiation on their own. So there's communication that's involved there. And a lot of that dialogue, again, will have to be from the adult in the early years. And then there's a fairness factor here. So they're learning fairness. They're learning that I get it and then you get it. And they're learning um, what's fair about the amount of time that they might have or the amount of the item. If it's a food item, how much do they get? So they're also learning fairness. When they're learning sharing, we're looking at cooperation because it involves two individuals and they have to um, cooperate in order to both utilize that same material at the same time. They also have to be flexible because, as I mentioned before, the, the the toy in question, if it's a truck, maybe their friend wants it to drive to the right and they want it to drive to the left. So if they're just using one truck, they, their, uh, their flexibility is being tested. How far will they be able to go and be flexible with what the other person wants? Also, there's an awareness of the other's thoughts. So again, they have to consider someone else's feelings and thoughts in the play scenario. And those are just some of the things that children can learn. Of course, there's so much that can be uh, learned in the process of taking turns and sharing, but I just wanted to highlight those for you. So the important part here is you might ask yourself, how can I support my child? Where do I start? We wanted to give you a few examples. I'm just going to touch on three examples tonight, and hopefully these will help solidify some of these concepts. And I wanted to highlight some common examples that come up when children play or things that may happen in your home or uh, when you're interacting with family or friends. So the first example here is a friend play date with a new toy. So in this example, you invite, maybe you have a play date, you invite your friend's child over, um, you know, maybe a friend and their children come over to your home and your child has a new toy that they love so much and the friend wants to play with the toy and your child gets upset. So what options do you have in this circumstance? In this particular circumstance, we suggest there's a lot of uh, ways that you can handle this situation, but one of the nice ways to get ahead of a situation like this and make it a non-issue is to have a discussion with your child prior to uh, the friend coming over. Now, if your child's very young, you would want to do this on your own. And of course you can include them, but it's it could be confusing. If they're older, they could be involved in this process. You might want to say something like, um, you, your friend is coming over. Why don't we put away some of the toys that you like very much and you might have a hard time um, sharing with someone else or taking turns with someone else? So if they have a beloved toy that you know would be very difficult for them to uh, to share with another child or take turns, it might be best to just not have that toy available. So you can put that toy in a closet. You can put that toy on a higher uh, shelf out of the room where the, the, the friend would not even have access to it. So that's something that we can do because it's not always necessary to expose your child to that type of stress, especially if it's something very, very special to them. So there's not a need to teach that skill with a high, um, with high emotion involved, we want to teach this skill uh, when the stakes are low. So you might want to go through your child's toys and put aside some of the favorites that you know might become an issue. That's the best way that I would suggest to handle this, especially if these are skills that you're teaching your child now. They'll get better with it over time and you might be able to introduce a favorite toy in the future. But in the beginning, kind of doing that editing process can be very, very helpful and it can help set up your child for success. So once you've done that, um, when you're, when, let's say this, if you haven't done that and the friend comes over and your child is upset, you can, be talking them through that, and this is a good time to maybe um, to maybe practice the turn taking part and just say it's your turn now. When you're finished, let's give it to your friend to play with, and then try to walk them through that. And 
in the beginning, you will have to do a lot as the adult to provide this support that they need in this process. So you're going to be doing a lot of the talking for them and a lot of the making sense. So again, if it becomes very stressful, you would want to take that toy um, away and put it in a safe place and maybe even have your child choose the safe place to keep the toy and then focus on the other toys. It's probably something uh, where the friend might want to hold that toy for one moment and then would put it down anyway. But if this stresses your child out too much, then you can just put it away. So it is very normal. I wanted to point out that it's very normal for a child to get upset with a favorite toy. It doesn't mean that your child does not know how to take turns or does not know how to share or does not know how to get along well with others. This is an example of making sure that our our expectations are age appropriate and you know your child best. So you know um, how they might react in a situation like this so you can prepare. In the second example here, you may be at a family event and your child won't give up a toy. So maybe it's not their toy, but you're at a gathering with other children. And even though there are things to do, your child keeps taking toys from others. And even if he, um, if he or she, your child has already already finished playing with them. So this is something that comes up a lot. And a lot of times children take toys out of other children's hands because it depends on their age. So if they are one or two years old, or even three, um, but mostly one and two, they're very egocentric. That's just part of the development. They don't think of others' feelings. And that is not anything that is not anything negative. That's just part of where they are in development. They can't really see beyond themselves in that in that stage of development. So it's very common that they take toys off of other children. And that's where we come in as the models and the adults talking them through that. So it's very common. Um, and if it happens, again, it's just about that preparation and expecting it um, and, and what you can do. So if you are at a family event and your child is taking toys, you can be talking them through that scenario and just say, you're playing with it now. Let's set a timer. And when you're done with it, we will give it to your cousin. So again, you will have to do a lot of that talking, a lot of that dialoguing so that your child can make sense of what's happening. And Another really important thing to point out here um, is that you will have to check in with your child. So when your child is playing with a toy, even when they put it down, that's the perfect chance for another child to take it. But it's important to, to circle back with your child and say, are you finished playing with it? Because as an adult, to us, it makes sense. They put the toy down. They no longer want it. To a child, that's not the same thing. So they may put a toy down, but putting that toy down may just mean that something else caught their eye. They dropped that, went for the other thing. But in their minds, that toy is still theirs. It's still their property. So um, it's important to do a check-in with the child and say, are you finished? Because your cousin wants to play or your friend wants to play with it. So let's give them a turn. So that's a really, really important point is just because your child has dropped it does not mean that they think they are done with it. So make sure to check in with them and let it be on their terms when they give up the toy. In the last example here, I, I already framed this out in the last uh, an example too, but if your child seems upset when others pick up the toy that they've already finished playing and they look confused, what can I do? So this goes hand in hand with the check-in, but if it's your child that looks confused, they're not trying to take toys out of others' hands, but they're kind of observing and, and confused in the situation. This is the time then you would also dialogue for your child and explain what's happening. And you may have to do those negotiations. A lot of times we uh, recommend doing a, a timer. It could be on your phone or um, it could be an egg timer if you're in your home. And you might say to your child, they're playing with it now. How many minutes do you think until they're done? Or how many minutes do you want to give if you're with another adult and you can figure this out for the children, you can set a timer. And then when that timer goes off, then they switch. So this is a skill that can be taught. It might seem overwhelming in the beginning, but it, it really can work very well. And a lot of times they don't even need that. They just need to know that they're going to get a chance. So just keep um, reiterating, it's your turn. When you're done, 
give it to your cousin. And then when it's your cousin's turn, it's the cousin's turn, you reiterate, it's your cousin's turn. Now, when they are done, it will be your turn. So again, a lot of repetition, a lot of assurance that their turn is coming. And what we do at the center is we say, what would you like to do while you're waiting? What would you like to play with? So we redirect them to another activity or another toy while they're waiting. And you can also acknowledge feelings. It's hard to wait, isn't it? It's hard for mommy when I have to wait for things too. Hmm. What can we do while we're waiting so we have more fun so that it can go by faster and you can help them find something. Now, your child may not want anything else. They may just want to stare at the child that's playing with the toy and that's okay too. You can also acknowledge that. You can say, we can just wait here together and when they're done, it will be your turn. You may have to repeat that many times, not just one time, because your child needs to hear that over and over again to make sure that they have that safety and security and knowing that they get it all to themselves when they have it. So some things to remember, your child is learning a complicated skill. It takes time and it needs adult support. So I think a lot of times we as parents can just say to the child, just share, just share. And we use that, we, we say that, and we think it's so simple or we're just you know, we're wanting them to, to, to master the skill. And I just wanted to point out how complicated that skill is because we pointed out some of the things that a child can learn from it, but just think about it. It's a mental process for your child. Your child doesn't cannot tell time. So it feels a little unsafe for them. They're not sure. Am I going to get it? How long will I have it for? When is it going to be my turn? They're very uncertain and it makes them, it, 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 it takes away a bit of their sense of security. So a lot of reassurance has to go in there. They also, um, they have to be able to, um, to be able to take a step back to, to reflect. And all of these things are skills that, that are, are, are we're still mastering as adults, right? So it's a very complicated skill and it's only with repetition and with adult support and with modeling that it can that that it gets easier. This is something that you can play with your child. You can do this type of um, this type of interaction. So it's a low stress activity. If you're at home, you can practice the skill of taking turns with your child or sharing both of those things. So Again, it's, it's, it's not as straightforward as one would believe. So we want to give our child the space to learn the skill. Making a plan ahead of time for desirable items can be very helpful, as I mentioned in the first example. So maybe putting all of the toys uh, that are desirable away. Maybe there's a favorite stuffed animal. Maybe there's a favorite truck. So putting that to the side is a very good way to avoid uh, an unfortunate situation, one that involves a lot of tears, which we don't want to uh, engage in when we have friends coming over um, or we're playing with someone else. You'll likely need to help out a lot in framing the conversation and filling in the blanks and mention that as well. You need to be the one that's giving your child the words for all the thoughts that are going on in their heads. They might be able to say a word or two or even some sentences, but you're going to have to fill in those gaps for them. So doing that at home is very helpful. You can model this for them while um, because children don't get as much practice at home if they don't have siblings. So it's important that um, that you as the adult can do that throughout the day with them. Practice taking turns, even if, of course, you might not want to play with their truck because it's not a desirable item to you, but you can still practice the skill while they're playing with the truck. You can say, can I have a turn? And say, when you're finished, mommy would like a turn. And then you can practice this dialoguing so it gets, they get more comfortable with it. Um, I did mention that setting a timer can be a tangible way to help children understand when their turn is up. And this is again in a low stress environment, it's low stakes when it's just you and your child. So if your child is old enough and it makes sense or your child can get this concept, a timer can be a good way to signal when it's time to switch. This can also stress some children out. So it's something that you would have to choose if this is the best strategy for your child. Never assume. Always check in with your child to see if they're finished with a toy. As I mentioned, dropping it, stepping on it, dragging it, throwing it doesn't mean that they are finished in their minds. So checking in, are you finished? Is your turn over? 
Can it be my turn now? Those are all important ways to check in with your child. And then get comfortable. Get comfortable saying things like, when she is finished, it's your turn. What would you like to do while we wait? Acknowledge waiting can be hard for your child. And again, it can be hard for you. You can say, it's hard for me too. I understand. Let's do this together. So just acknowledging that is, um, is a way to help your child feel supported. So other, uh, another point that I just wanted to make is sharing um, can be practiced in a low stress environment at home. If you're sharing a meal with your child, maybe you have a plate, um, you know, a fruit in front of you and you can practice sharing by taking a bite and saying, here's some for you, here's some for me. You can also practice turn taking with the same plate of fruit. You can say, it's my turn to pick one. I'm going to pick the strawberry and now it's your turn to pick one. What are you going to pick? So that is a little way of, of teaching both skills and practicing both types of skills. So you can get a feel for what the difference between turn taking and sharing actually is. So does anyone have any questions? It's our question and answer time. I know that this information can be, again, it's, it's slight nuances. There's not, um, it's, it, there's not maybe a lot of straightforward uh, questions, but if a situation comes up or a scenario comes up that you would like to talk through, we're always there to do that. If there's something that you would like to expand upon and learn more about, please let me know. I can expand upon any part. You can also write in the chat if you have a question. And if not, we will just go through. I know sometimes it's hard to think of questions in the moment, but you can certainly uh, email them in or call us and we will be happy to get the resources you need to make sure that turn taking goes smoothly in your home. For everyone that attended tonight, we have two special books that are about the topics that we um, covered tonight. And the first one is, Can I Have a Turn? And the second one is, Elephant Learns to Share, a book about sharing. So the two um, people, the first two people that, um, the, the first two people that reach out will be the recipients of both of these books. So if you just send a quick message that hello um, in the chat, you can win these books and we will be passing out these books tomorrow at school. I wanted to just do a quick little shout out about our upcoming events. Don't miss our next parents workshop, which is is my child a good friend? And this is also one that we get often. It supports the same pillars that we're talking about tonight. And we're doing these types of workshops this month because it is a friendship month. So February is our special events. And we're going to talk about that next. But Thursday, February 23rd at 630, we will be having the parent workshop, Is My Child a Good Friend? So don't forget to sign up. It will be a live Zoom. Also, we have more happenings in February. Uh, Friendship Day, known as Valentine's Day in other places, but Friendship Day at Wellkind is February 14th, and we are asking that your child wear pink or red if they have pink or red. We will be um, having some celebrations that day. We also have a nutrition learning series on February 15th. We are so excited about that. We have a nutritionist coming and doing demos, and you will learn so much from that series on February 15th. So we have a guest. We cannot wait for that. We also are celebrating Kindness Day on February 17th, and we will be doing random acts of kindness all throughout the month, but we will be highlighting particular things on that day. So look out for that. Again, I mentioned the parent workshop on February 23rd and our second bunch of assessments for the year. So it's your child will be evaluated by their teachers 
for their progress. That's our winter assessments. And that um, is on February 27th. So you will have access to your child's winter assessment then. Just wanted to point out that all of these events are available on our calendar and you can find our calendar by visiting our website, www.wearewellkind.com. You can look on the top on the bar when you type in wearewellkind.com. On the browser bar, you'll see calendar. And if you go to calendar, you will see everything that I just talked about. We keep that updated. So if you ever have a question, that's the best place to go. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Here's all of our contact information. We so value your partnership and we thank you for joining us. Have a great evening.